Hello everyone and welcome to another phaser pedal review and this time it is about Smallstone from Electroharmonics. It is another classic phaser pedal introduced in 1974. Years have passed and today it is a part of the Nano series, which is supposed to sound the same as vintage units. At the same time, different sources describe it as one of the best phaser pedals ever. As for the price, you can find it for 7160 in the United States, 61 pounds in the UK. 78 euros in the rest of Europe. Japan has the lowest price, which is about 67 US dollars, while Russia is the opposite with about 90. Compared to other phaser pedals, it is somewhere in the lower part of the middle price range, which is fair considering its features and the fact that you get in two devices in one, more on that later. And now let's take a look at what's inside of the box. First of all, there's a product catalog, with brief descriptions on all Electroharmonics products. There's also a short manual and a warranty card. Let's take a closer look at the pedal. Oh, there's more, a couple of stickers. Anyway, it looks pretty solid and simple. There's just a color switch and the rate knob, and that's it. The enclosure feels somewhat unfinished. I don't know if you can see that sign on the bottom or that dirt on the side. I have no explanation why it is there and what it is for. Most of the pedals produced in China today have a higher quality finish than this one. Small stone is not a heavy stone, that is more or less the weight of an average pedal of this size. And even though it's called nano, it is not as small as fashionable mini pedals, it's just a regular size. Now let's open the stone and look at what's inside. And look at this, it comes with a battery. I absolutely didn't see that coming. What a nice surprise! So you can basically plug and play right out of the box. At the same time, it can take a standard 9 volt adapter. Those of you who like to modify pedals will be disappointed, because there isn't much to modify here. It is built on SMDs. For everyone else, there are no user serviceable components inside, so don't try this at home. Before we get to the tests, let's take a look at Wikipedia and figure out how a phaser does what it does. Long story short, a series of filters creates notches in the frequency response. Then an oscillator moves these notches up and down the frequency spectrum, resulting in a swirly effect. Each two filters or stages make one notch. Phasers may have four, six, eight or more stages. The number of stages changes the sound, making it somewhat more saturated. Now that we know this, we can create white noise sample, because white noise has equal intensity at all frequencies. Play it through our pedal and see what happens. As the sound goes through the phaser, you can clearly see two notches going up and down, which makes it a four-stage phaser. Notches change the shape as I flip the color switch. That's because the color mode has more feedback, making the effect more saturated. As well as the oscillator has a bigger amplitude, which makes sweeps wider. If we take a close look at what we've just recorded, we'll find out that the oscillator is a perfect triangle. The same for the color mode, but with bigger amplitude and higher contrast. Here they are together, color mode on the left, normal mode on the right. And this is the frequency analysis of MXR Phase 90 from my last video. Check the difference. This explains why small stone sounds different and has more density. Now let's check if it really has a true bypass switch. I'll measure the resistance between input and output. If it is close to zero, which it is, the pedal has a bypass switch. There's no guarantee though that there's nothing attached to it inside and it won't suck the tone. Many foot switches tend to produce an audible pop sound when pressed. Let's check how this one performs. I've connected the pedal to my pedal board and turned on the delay, so we'll definitely hear any popping sound if it occurs. There's a little click, but it's not too bad. When running on a battery, the first time you turn it on, the click is much louder.
You could just hear that when the effect is turned on, the volume drops. This seems to be a common problem with Smalls tone, many people are complaining about that. Now let's check the noise level. I've developed the following procedure, which I'll be using for other pedals in the future as well. The pedal I'm testing is connected to my preamp. All controls on the preamp are set to the maximum. The preamp is connected to the sound card and gain on the sound card is set to zero. As soon as I turn on the preamp, you'll hear the actual noise produced by the phaser. Unfortunately, there is some buzz when I touch the enclosure, probably caused by ground problem. And I have reasons to think that it's not just my pedal, but a general design mistake. There is more noise with color activated. Now let's check if there is going to be any difference for the cable plugged in. No difference, really. As I mentioned in my last video, this test is relative, and it needs to be done on more than one pedal to get a feeling about the noise level. With that said, let's compare it to phase 90. It's the same procedure, but both are connected through the AB switch. Small stone is on channel A, phase 90 is on channel B. Well, as you can see, small stone has a little bit more noise. And when color is activated, much more noise than phase 90. Well, the buzz problem was really annoying. I've checked everything and it was really caused by small stone. It happened when running on a battery, with the power supply, with and without the input cable. In the beginning I said there were two devices in one. The buzz was very frustrating until I realized that I can turn it into something positive. And here it is, the undocumented feature of small stone. A patch cable tester. Everybody knows, the best cable is no cable at all. So let's test different patch cables and check what they really add to your tone. The first one is gonna be EBS flat patch cable made in Sweden. With a price tag for Euro 50, it's not the cheapest one. Here's what it sounds like. This one you can get from Tomon for 2 euro 50, and it is one of the cheapest cables. It is Tomon branded and it doesn't look bad at all. Let's check the performance. This one is a longer version of a previous one. Let's see if the length affects the performance in any way. Surprisingly, it's a little bit quieter than the shorter one. The next one is really cheap as well. It's 5 euro for a pair of cables and is from German company Klotz Cables. It looks like the best one so far. Now let me show you what a good cable must sound like. I've built this one about 10 years ago. Just went to a store, bought some parts that looked good to me and put them together. Following my favorite principle, want something good, build it yourself. And the total price was not more than 3-4 euros. Let's check a couple of connectors too. This one is from Moore and is for 5 euro 60. And the last one is the cheapest Tomon branded connector for 2 euro 50. It's funny, this one has the best price and the best performance. Okay, let's get back to the small stone and finally listen to what it sounds like.
Now let's activate the color and check how it changes the sound. Normal mode, a little bit higher rate. The same with color. Normal mode, low rate and crunch sound. The same with color. A little bit faster. And with color. Let's make it really fast. The color mode. Slow and heavy.
Until now, my small stone was connected after the preamp or after distortion. Now let's put the phaser first. I know many of you prefer to run the effects in front of the amp. Here's what it sounds like. Now let's put it face to face with MXR Phase 90 once again and check how different or similar they sound at the same speed rate settings. And of course I'm talking about the normal mode, not the color mode. So, let's put it all together. Small Stone is a four-stage phaser. It's very simple and easy to work with. Weight and size are pretty average. It can run on a battery or with a power supply. Two pros and cons. Small Stone is very simple, which is good if you like simplicity, but bad if you need flexibility. A battery was a good surprise. Many people complain that the volume drops when the effect is activated. And the ground problem is very frustrating. It's not something you would expect from a legendary pedal like this. Other than that, it does what it's supposed to. It shifts the phase. Well, that's it for today. I'll be glad to hear from you in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon and thanks for watching.